Chile was a relatively poor country. I mean, I don't know much about the, the history, the, the, the pre-modern history of Chile. Uh, Chile is a resource-rich place, but like the rest of Latin America, Chile was dominated by both left-wing and right-wing governments that were statist, that believed in central planning, central control, that believed in the government ownership of resources, government ownership of companies. It didn't really matter whether it was left or right, and this is the same is true of of the regimes in, in, um, in Argentina where, where the Peronist, are they left, are they right? Uh, you know, what, what does it even mean uh, in those terms? You can clearly in, in Brazil say that Lula is a socialist, uh, but even in Brazil's history, it was the military dictatorship, a left-wing dictatorship, a right-wing dictatorship. It doesn't mean anything in any significant way. All these uh, rulers, whether elected democratically or authoritarians have all been, uh, almost all of them, have been statists of one form or another. And uh, whether they created uh, crony systems, uh, they all nationalized industries and, uh, and uh, tried to establish robust, I mean, not robust, but, but minimal uh, welfare states. Minimal because it, it, it was poor, these countries are poor, and, and there was not a lot of a lot of money to redistribute. Right? Uh, they had some big corporations, uh, big corporations that are always connected to, directly to the government. In 1970, uh, uh, Chile elected an explicit Marxist uh, to, uh, uh, to head the government uh, in Chile. Allende uh, was elected president, and uh, he was a real socialist and uh, a, a, a real Marxist. And, very much had sympathies to the Soviet Union and had sympathies uh, to the worst of the, of the communist regimes. And the economy in Chile was already in bad shape before Allende showed up. But Allende, uh, during, during the uh, Salvador Allende period, uh, it, uh, it really spun out, uh, spun off and, and became much worse. Uh, inflation picked up as it did in many parts of the world. Uh, and, and inflation was out of control, uh, you know, and uh, again, he, was, he had this uh, affiliation with, um, uh, with uh, the communist bloc. I think uh, the U.S. feared uh, his affiliation with the Soviet Union. There was always the Monroe Doctrine of, of not allowing communists to get it really established uh, in, uh, in the uh, Western Hemisphere, in the American Hemisphere. Uh, so in, 19, in 1973, uh, a, a few months, uh, well, maybe 1972, Allende appointed Pinochet to head the army, uh, to head up the army. A few months after that appointment in 1973, uh, Pinochet uh, basically uh, headed up a coup with a junta uh, and uh, deposed Allende, and they actually landed up committing suicide in the presidential palace. And... Uh, and uh, uh, Pinochet uh, took over with his, uh, with his group. Ultimately, he, uh, he, he, dealt, he relegated uh, his co-conspirators to some uh, more minor role in government, and Pinochet became the leader of Chile, the, 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 the unchallenged dictator of, uh, of uh, Chile. Uh, in 1981, uh, there was a, a constitution and part of that constitution gave Pinochet an eight-year term uh, with the idea that there would be a referendum at the end of that, those eight years, which would determine whether he had another eight years after that. We'll get to that uh, later on. Anyway, 73, uh, Pinochet takes over. I mean, his main focus, Pinochet's main focus is, uh, Scott will love this, uh, Pinochet's main focus was uh, destroying the left. Uh, 130,000 people rounded up. Many of them killed. Uh, there were brutal pictures of people being thrown out of helicopters into the ocean, of people machine gunned. Uh, a lot of people, thousands of people, were tortured by the Pinochet regime. People were hunted down. Uh, it, it, it was a brutal time, a brutal time uh, for anybody with uh, left-wing uh, sympathies. And while I do, you know, do not like the left and resent the left and uh, don't agree with uh, much of their policies, uh, I do not 
believe that uh, you know killing them and murdering them and imprisoning them and uh, doing away with uh, freedom of speech is ever the solution uh, to such things. Uh, Pinochet was a probably was a standard right wing uh, you know Latin American dictator, a statist. Uh, he wanted polit- he wanted uh, control, but he also faced a really difficult situation, a really difficult economy, an economy that uh, w- was was struggling, uh, high w- really high rates of inflation, and he he needed a solution. He he w- was not going to be able to maintain his position. He knew that uh, unless he found ways to stabilize the economy and actually get it growing. Now. There had been a group, I think it was like 30, uh, 30 young people who had, been, uh, who had gone uh, to the University of Chicago to study economics as part of an exchange program, a Catholic University here in uh, Santiago with the University of Chicago. These students uh, had gone and they had studied with Milton Friedman and others of the Chicago School of Economics, a free market school of economics, a monetarist school of economics. And... Um, they were now back in Chile, and uh, Pinochet turned to them, and in 1975 appointed one of them as Treasury Secretary, and uh, and then many uh, many of them were appointed to positions in various economic positions within the uh, uh, within the Chilean government, and Pinochet basically gave them a free reign. Uh, they uh, uh, they over the next, from 1975 really until then the Pinochet regime in 1990, so over the 15-year period, uh, they did some amazing things that uh, you could probably only do, at least at that time, uh, with uh, with the dictatorship. They privatized basically 95% of the state-owned companies in Chile. They, uh, they cut government spending dramatically. Uh, they cut regulations. They slashed regulations. They did a lot of the things that Millet is talking about doing, a lot of things that Millet would like to do. Millet is, of course, being challenged in doing it because he is going through, and I think he has to go through, um, he has to go through the, um, the political process. They didn't have to go through the political process. So Pinochet basically backed uh, everything that they did, but they they basically slashed, um, uh, slashed government spending, slashed regulations. They did something very rare uh, in, in history, really. Uh, they privatized Social Security. Jose Pinera uh, was, was the lead uh, behind privatizing Social Security. Uh, but uh, they did the kind of economic reforms that you wish every country would do. They did the kind of economic reforms that... Uh, uh, that we're hoping Millet will actually will actually do right uh, that that he has promised to do, but now is, is being constrained by the political process uh, in doing. But uh, uh, the, the the Chicago Boys Program that's what they were called. These graduates of the University of Chicago uh, in, in economics, the Chicago Boys Program is very much or very similar to the program uh, that. Uh, Millet has uh, has launched in um, in Argentina, and uh, you know, let's hope that the results are similar. That is, that that uh, the the Argentinian economy does as well as the Chilean economy has done since 1975. It is it is worth noting that it it, it wasn't easy. Right, uh, Chile went through some really hard times as these reforms were being put in place. Uh, its economy uh, had years where it shrunk. Uh, in 1981, during kind of uh, the global recession uh, that that uh, afflicted the United States as well, uh, during the early part of the Reagan administration, uh, you know, the Chilean economy shrunk significantly. And, uh, you know, so it's not that you can impose these free market reforms and cut spending and deregulate and everything just, boom, happens. It takes time. And the adjustment for some people, many people, can be very painful. 
Ultimately, during the Pinochet years, the economy grew at about 3% a year on average, some years much higher, some years, as I said, shrunk, shrink. And, and the real benefits of uh, the Chicago Boys reforms were actually captured by governments after Pinochet. That is, 15 years after the Chicago Boys started. So uh, uh, from 1990 on, uh, the, the uh, Chilean economy grew at 7%, which is dramatic, and that's how it became the richest country on a per capita GDP basis in, um, uh, in, uh, in Latin America. So uh, one of the lessons and one of the things to pay attention to in terms of what happens in Argentina is that it's not going to be all roses. And I think, again, Millet has a, a, a pretty good economics team around him. I think he knows what he's doing. He is an economist himself. Uh, and, and I think uh, uh, everything that, ha that he is proposing doing from an economic perspective are the right things fundamentally to do. But, you know, it doesn't just result in readjustment and everything starts rising and everything starts getting better. And this is part of the dangers. The danger is that bad things happen. Uh, his reforms get blamed on it and everything is reversed since Millet, not like Pinochet, Millet has to get reelected, has to get reelected in four years. Um, and uh, in 2025, there are parliamentary elections. And I think that if he really wants to have these reforms go through, uh, if he really wants the reforms to be implemented, he's going to be, have to do very, very well in the parliamentary elections. He's going to have to form a coalition around these ideas in the parliamentary elections so that he could, does not get vetoed by a parliament as he has been uh, so far. So um, in, um, in uh, Chile's case, uh, in 1981, uh, some of the Chicago boys were fired because of this big recession that happened. But basically, these reforms continued into the 1990s. And as I said, 95% of the companies were privatized. It is true that given the nature of authoritarianism, not only uh, did that result in uh, just horrific violations of individual rights, uh, horrific treatments of uh, people, uh, of people in, uh, uh, who were uh, um, sent to prison and tortured and murdered. So, so that, that is definitely horrific. But in addition to that, uh, you know, there's a lot of cronyism, right? So privatization, privatization could go a variety of different ways, but you get a sense that if a dictatorship or if an authoritarian is managing the process of privatization, even if the economists have the best of intentions, the Chicago boys have the best of intentions, uh, it's not surprising that family members and relatives and close associates and friends of the ruling junta of, 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 the, of the dictatorship are going to get some of the juicy prizes, some of the juicy properties out of a privatization, and that uh, cronyism is going to dominate. And I think one of, the, one of the things that are holding Chile back from even being a bigger success, and one of the things holding Chile back today as, 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 it, is, as it has turned leftwards over the last you know, decade or so, particularly over the last few years, we'll talk about that again later, uh, is this legacy of cronyism the idea that some people benefited from those privatizations, from the liberalizations disproportionately and not based necessarily on merit, that there is vast inequality in Chile, not surprising, but that the inequality maybe was not earned, that inequality to some extent resulted from the cronyism. Uh, so Chile, as I said, from 1990, uh, continued to grow Substantially, it had several presidents democratically elected. I, I, I will mention this about Pinochet to his credit. I mean, he was a brutal dictator and, and deserves condemnation on every front. But when it came time to have a referendum about whether he should have another eight years or not, 
he he could have not had the 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 referendum. He could have just like most dictators, just continue to rule. And and he went through with the referendum. Now he was convinced he would win. He was convinced he would win. There's actually an Argentinian. Um, there's an Argentinian um, movie, a dramatization called I think it's called No. And basically, what Pinochet did is he had a referendum. And you could vote yes to continue with Pinochet or no. Uh, and um, I think to Pinochet's complete surprise, the people of Chile voted no. They voted against him. They voted to kick him out, even though the economy had done really, really well in the late 1980s. And uh, Chile was starting to really benefit from all those reforms. Um, they voted him out. And again, he could have ignored them. He held all the levers of power. And Pinochet stepped, Pinochet stepped aside, and there was an election held, and um, uh, somebody won. I don't think it was even his candidate. And, uh, but they continued the reforms, and they continued. They didn't undo the reforms, and Chile uh, benefited, uh, benefited enormously from those reforms. By the way, the movie is called No, as I said, and it's definitely worth watching. It's, it's a good movie. It's in Spanish. It was made in Chile, and, and I think it's definitely worth watching. Uh, so, uh, uh, referendum was held. Uh, uh, Chile became a, 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 a democracy. Uh, uh, presidents have been elected since, I don't know if it's maybe four or five years. And uh, for the most part, they have preserved many of the reforms that we engaged in. I'd say the one area where Chile has reverted, is on, on, the, on the welfare state. I mean, uh, it's very hard, given altruism, given morality, uh, to sustain a small welfare state. And the welfare state significantly has grown in Chile and is growing right now quite a bit.